Welcome back to Rendezvous for Beirut. And we've been talking about all things to do with clubs and nightlife. And uh, just a reminder that Ivan Dips is providing an artwork that's going up for auction and all the proceeds will go to NGOs. So uh, make sure you put in a bid for that because it's going for a good cause. So sitting with me here, we have uh, two guys who normally would be called competition, but they're actually friends and we're all kind of friends anyway, especially in these tough economic times and especially after what's happened on August 4th. Sitting with me here is Nimr Saliba, Uber House, Discotheque, Garten, and of course, uh, Wasim Bumalham, formerly known as Who Killed Bruce Lee, an awesome band that was rocking the stages years ago and is now part of Factory People running several clubs and venues and locations. And both of these clubs have been damaged beyond operation. So Nimr, let's, let's start with you. Let's, let's, let's get a bit of background on how it all got started. I think it was back in 2011, 2012? November 2012. November 2012, in Hamra. Deep end of Hamra. Small little basement in this hotel that was cool and all. Proper underground. Proper underground. Yeah. It was, uh, for us, it was the beginning. Uh, the boys had already, uh, the scene was already there, up and running, from BO18 to basement to the parties that Sionek Sat was doing, Dex on the Beach. And then uh, we felt the need for a, for a club. Basement had closed back then. Um, and so... Uh, so the boys, uh, from, from the days of the speakeasy, my bar, we came together with Romax, got uh, a few other friends, Ziad, Ronald Hajar, Nabi Hesta, Phil, Fuad Zarzur, you know, Trace Colacion, made a nice posse of, of, of cool kids, and uh, we opened the club. And the season went well, and by the following summer came the outdoor venue. Yeah, it was, uh, it was the winter venue, and I came from a, I came from a background of, uh, of bars. And I knew, um, I knew summers were very hard. Winter was good for us, but summer with the former Sky Bar that used to be here and uh, all these rooftops that open in summer and the beach clubs, they would suck out every single person from those bars. So I knew that it was an only a six month thing, maximum by April. So I had to find uh, an alternative uh, venue for Uber House. Looked everywhere. I was convinced it was gonna be a rooftop. We nearly took one in downtown. I remember soundcheck day, cops came through the building. I'm like, okay, this is not the venue. It's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. Because <laughs> in my head, I'm like, well, summer needs to be either on the roof, on the beach. But uh, neither neither those options panned out. And then, all right, so I was like, if uh, I want to find something fresh, do something kind of fresh, you know. And this is how the garden idea came out. So it was, you know, we, you were in the house, and now we're going to take you out to the garden, right? Nice. Uh, and uh, the Beirut Exhibition Center was there, BEC and BL. Back then, there was not much going on in, in BL. Shafi al Khazan had Sky Bar. Um, the Listeriades had Music Hall. And then uh, comes along a 22-year-old <laughs> <laughs> kid that wants to take a parking lot. <laughs> And there's a Beirut exhibition center right there, and there's this beautiful bamboo garden. And I was like, that's it. We'll do a garden right here. We'll just have to buy another tree, and like another line of trees, put some master turf, build a dome. Got it. And it was all locally made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, uh, all with those hands. We were talking to uh, Fouad Bishwati earlier, and yeah. uh, we were sitting underneath. The, the pyramid, which yeah. used to be the dome, that eventually became a pyramid. Yeah. And he explained how there were issues in Beirut, again, with sound, yeah. with these uh, hotels, which Four popped seasons. up only after the club started. Yeah, I mean, the garden, when it was the original garden that was founded in 2013, was closer to towards this side, and it was kind of in a hole. And the dome was there, and it was still like, we had uh, the Function 1 sound system that we had was, you know, just a stack. Yeah. Uh, Nothing that we have today. Woody stack. Yeah, Woody stack <laughs> style, you know, like, you know, just uh, stack them right and left. It was pretty powerful. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to the sound system that we have installed today. But even then, we got, a, we got ourselves a little lawsuit from the Four Seasons. We were, we were allowed. Uh, and then when we had to move plots, uh, the idea of, of, of building the temple, the pyramid, came, well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm very into geodesic kind of structures. And so the dome or like platonic structures, so sorry, not platonic structures. So the dome is, you know, like a nice sphere or half sphere. But then I really want to do a pyramid just because. Uh, and then when I consulted with Fuad, he's like, 
this is actually genius because this is how you need to compress. I didn't think of sound, but th that's how you compress sound. Either you have to build really high walls or you need to absorb the back end. Right? Place the bass right there and then it will just absorb that sound and you just shoot it that way. And the Four Seasons is just 100, 200 meters away. Um, it worked. And you had people for years who were trying to complain about that, but once you guys got that structure done, it was seven, eight years, everything was fine, right? 2000, uh, the, the, the 2017, it's only in three years, that structure, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, the, if you're behind the, the temple, literally zero dB, nothing. You walk through that tunnel, in the club and it was yeah. there yeah. yeah it's beautiful and sound was really important to us so uh wasim as well uh, again I, I love mentioning the fact that you were in a band member because you know the technicalities of it all too so also how did you get involved with factory people and grand because uh, i know that you've been friends with them for many years as well yeah. and you joined the team how many years ago around like around 2015 around uh, when uh, grand factory took off and then uh, um also came to be around three years ago this was supposed to be our third season yeah. supposed to be Right, and... A um, couple of weeks of a season. Yeah, technically, well, I, I had known uh, Jade since his band days as well. He had an he had a awesome band uh, uh, back, back in the day where Nova was happening and That's all right, those yeah. things were happening. Field. So, yeah, <laughs> and he, he also used to own uh, the base, co owned the basement with uh, uh, Ahmed Husseini and uh, Abdu Shleil Abdu, who's my cousin as well. So I know uh, Jad since he, he, his hair was black before uh, he turned into the silver head. Silver head. <laughs> so, uh, so he was part of uh, my growing up as well. He was also like a great inspiration for me, musically, let's say. And um, in 2015, I guess I, uh, on a personal level, wanted to uh, leave uh, the corporate world. I was uh, working in the, in the corporate world in multinationals. Advertising agency. I yeah, I was in yeah. uh, Leo Burnett at the time. We, and we encouraged you. We had a drink on one night. I think it was the year before, 2014. We yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Now's we your were, time to get out we, of there. Where were we? We were in downtown over uh, Buddha Bar. New What's Asia, the name? Capitol. 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 Capitol, true. <laughs> it was you, me, and uh, who was with us? Roger. R Roger, Roger true. <laughs> true. And um, I, 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 we sat together and uh, we just had that idea of like um, uh, we had the same passion for creative the same passion for music and the same passion for like the local and uh, regional scene and how to grow it because when you're an artist growing up in a city like ours that doesn't have really the infrastructure for such uh, for such projects you have to uh, do it yourself right we all Start do it ourselves scratch. and yeah. you have to also have that personal in initiative you can't wait for anyone to do anything you have to do it yourself and I saw the same energy with uh, Jad and Tal and everyone in the team. And we just, like the chemistry, we clicked together and we uh, started uh, um, creating, if you, if you want, like um, uh, uh, a certain a, a movement and not only a party. Uh, because we all wanted to be a part of one. And uh, maybe we didn't find the right one to suit uh, maybe our hopes and dreams. So we said, like, why don't we build one together? And then came a lot of also key members like Samer, who also was uh, spoke to us were, earlier, yeah. speaking to him. And we all come from different backgrounds. So put that collective creative uh, group in one room and uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, negotiation, a lot of... Uh, uh, arguments and then you get something uh, really interesting out of it so that's kind of how it started and uh, we never looked back from then and it's pretty genius because you know people who were in the corporate world <laughs> a lot of us were managed to break out of it because we believed that there was you know there was something functional something groundbreaking something that we believed in like a passion you know as to to bring us to where we are and you know never has been doing this since you barely graduated college i believe right yes this is the year I graduated. And you believe that this was I was, a uh, I mean, I was, I was working since my, my college days. I was working since I was 16. And uh, I was in Saudi Arabia. I was going to open a, I worked for a pots and pans company selling <laughs> silverware. And, yeah, the other, the, other, the other side of the food, <laughs> the, other and, of the, the other world. side of the food and beverage industry. I guess, I'm guessing you did it well, Bess. Ah, it was a good salesman. <laughs> you know, I can sell, I can sell anything to anyone. Uh, uh, so I was convinced that okay, I'm gonna take the factory uh, that's here and the distribution that's here, and I'll take it to Saudi Arabia. I was in Riyadh, and uh, my friend uh, from the rugby team calls me up and is like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "I'm in, I'm in Saudi." He's like, "Where?" I'm like, I'm in Saudi Arabia. He's like, what the hell are you doing there? I'm like, I'm working. He's like, bro, let's open a bar. <laughs> Michael Shamas. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah, Michael. It was Jada bin Asif, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then Michael as well. I'm like, fine. He's like, remember, we have a lot of friends, bro. 
Let's just open a bar. We'll open a rugby bar. And, you know, we'll fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know. Get all the big buff guys to come in with the rugby and stuff. Yeah, so it wasn't that. the rugby. It, wasn't, it didn't turn out to be a rugby bar, thankfully. Thank God. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so much testosterone in that <laughs> bar. <much>. Thank <laughs> God. But it, it turned out to be a nice, you know, uh, nice alternative to behind the green door, but in the Humbra place, you know. Yeah. It, Humbra was difficult to operate in. Uh, but it had its glory days. Yeah. And Uber House saw the end of it. In 2012, it was right the end of it. And also we opened in 2009. It was really the hardship. The, the Syrian war had just started. So for me as a businessman, I honestly started when it was shitty. Like it was never easy. Uh, our, our, our colleagues or even our like, you know, people like Shafi and the guys, Tony Hubbard and the boys, Mazin and Zayn, and you know, just the generation right before us, they did see those glory days. Yes. They, they had, they, they, t they tasted the millions, That's right. you know, yeah. we've done them, uh, both of us, both the of our 90s. companies, you know, you know, even 2006, 2000s, man. Yeah. 2006, they made a 1994 shit. 1994 till 2006, those yeah, were even like, 2000, those were like all the way up to the Syrian war, right before the Syrian war, that's when, uh, and and I mean, I'm sure I'm sure if he wants to talk about their numbers, but we did well every summer. Can you imagine how much more we would have made if this company was this country was a bit stable, yeah, and this region was a bit normal, just a bit? It's crazy. Because e even in the midst of the instability, things were still rocking. Because Lebanese and rolling. people are yeah. just crazy. They want to party. Uh, at least, at least, let's talk about our sector. Obviously. Uh, I'm sure a lot of businesses, and hence why there's a revolution, is because you know we got to a, to a point of no return. The, 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 the country's collapsing. But summer 2019, last summer, two, three months before the revolution, it was a record summer for us, Gart. Can you imagine? A record summer, and three months later there's a revolution. Can you imagine how much more institutions could have made if, sure. if there was a bit of normality? When did when did you guys start to feel like there was a dip? Because we spoke, I spoke to Samer earlier, and we're like, over the years things were kind of rocking and rolling. But there was, were there any signs that there was trouble starting uh, pre October twenty nineteen? I mean, uh, um, if you if you go through it all, even uh, during the during the basement days, right? Uh, you had that campaign where it was uh, said it was safer underground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You remember in 2006 when the the war had broke out? It was probably I think the first summer that basement had had opened. And uh, I, I guess in 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 an inf in, a, in, a, in the geopolitics that we live in uh, within Lebanon and every every other uh, country that is a neighboring country or has a certain effect on the way uh, life uh, goes on here, you, ca you, you, can't, you don't know what to expect, right? It's um, every single uh, year, there's something that you have to deal with. Yeah. There's something that has to go into your business plan and you have to account for. Or there's some sort of obstacle that you have to overrun. And the, the thing is, you know, they, they talk about the Lebanese resilience and um, basically uh, our, our country in terms of, for example, the industry that Nimr is talking about, the industry of the F&B industry, because we are part of the F&B industry. The F&B industry in the last 10 years alone had generated around 110 billion uh, for the GDP, wow. of which 30 billion was paid in taxes to the government. Sure. Where did that money go? No one knows. But yeah. that should have also uh, helped to even build the infrastructure of this sector even further, or helped to build infrastructure of other sectors. You know, it, like this was a, a one, one of the major things that the company was offering in terms of, uh, for example, uh, yeah. uh, the night life tourism. Nightlife, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> you had that, you had that happening. and But you also had a lot of other things going for the country, right? Because um, clubbing or the party scene uh, kind of changed since 2000, um, in, in the late uh, 2005 to 2010 and up to today, because um, number one, you had a surge in the local scene. The local scene got really strong, whether it was bands or DJs or people producing music. And uh, number two, also from a cultural level, you had a lot of different music movements within the art scene. You know, uh, the Nadine Labake movies, all of that was happening. Yeah. And all of these people kind of, they, they wanted a home, right? They wanted a place where they can chill with their friends and uh, uh, celebrate really interesting moments. and suddenly the party scene wasn't uh, only about going out, uh, having a couple of drinks, uh, paying a shit ton of money, taking a table. It was 
also more about uh, hanging out, uh, getting introduced to other artists because you know that's a place that's frequented by artists a lot. So you had many movements and we were just in the right moment to kind of uh, be, uh, uh, be, be inside all of that mm -hmm. and make the best out of it. So, but there were always setbacks, always. And the biggest setback, I think, was uh, towards the end of last year when the currency devaluation started happening. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I, I completely disagree to the idea of the revolution affected the economy. I don't think uh, the revolution affected the economy. I think the revolution might have been the only thing that could have really awakened that beast that should have been awakened Things uh, were before. not right. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. But yeah. the currency devaluation, because of the banking sy system and how it uh, operated in the last 10 years, uh, the Ponzi scheme that they're accusing the BDL of, and all of that, led us to... We woke up one day and the dollar was 7,500. And that was, that was like... That was difficult to, na to navigate around. But we also did well because then you have two choices. Adapt. You, yeah, you either, you either look at your profit margin and you wave goodbye to it and you try to maintain a certain pricing so it's still affordable for people to go out. And because going out here, you know it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an escape. That's right. It's not like other countries where you go out just because it's part of your uh, daily. Routine. It's an escape. Yeah, yeah. And, if you, and if you understand that it's an escape, you understand that you can't really make it heavier for people to go out. So then you say goodbye to your profit margin. We didn't have a problem with that. We were going to continue doing that, you know, and continue supplying that. But then the explosion, um, then it makes it impossible for your op operation to continue, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, but we were, always, uh, we were always fighting. Like Nimr said, he went into Hamra. Hamra was buzzing. It was happening. There were a couple of years, the golden years of Hamra. We all thought that that place will have like a 10 or 15 year future. Two, three and he years, had to struggle yeah. that he had something and then he had to move again and then readapt. And it's yeah. a constant struggle, I'm sure, for them as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, every winter was a uh, garden saved us every summer. Winters, uh, winters have been very, very hard on our, on our firm from the get go, from 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16. Every single winter has been extremely difficult for us. We had one hard, two hard summers, but uh, 2015, the You Stink Revolution. Yeah. This is, I think, the beginning of when you had to really notice something is not right with this country. Lebanese people cannot unite for trash. <laughs> it's very sad. That's true. Uh, uh, and this, this is that's if the, how this is this is going to go. But this is the reality of things. You know, the Lebanese people at the end of the day did not unite for the trash crisis. We shut down our venues to try and support that revolution, but anyways, it didn't pick up. Um, but it was it was hard, you know. 2012, Hamra died. Uh, 13, uh, we couldn't reopen it there. Tried to open another venue. 15, uh, was revoked our license. Six, 17, and, and again, finally three years afterwards to finally get the license. 19. Country goes to financial crisis, political crisis. It's just been a, it's just been one f fucked up roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been one fucked up roller coaster. Anyone in our position that has been working this hard would be a millionaire anywhere in the world. Uh, and then came 2020 and the coronavirus pandemic. Which yeah, is, that which was that's on everyone. That's yeah. on everyone. This yeah. is something that I think our generations will learn how to forecast in their business plans. Uh, it's going to come. It's funny that we have to forecast that in our business plans for now. Listen, right. you yeah. need to. You need to. At I mean, the end I, of the business plan, uh, oh, you didn't account for the pandemic. Reserve. Uh, yeah. You got to put, <laughs> you gotta yeah. put pandemic reserves now. <laughs> yeah. true. True. But, you know, you were saying something about, you know, business plans and whatnot. No, no Lebanese businessman can ever make a business plan. It doesn't exist. And maybe that's why we're super tough. Maybe that's why we were very successful outside of Lebanon. Uh, obviously, the last 10 years taught us how to have very thick skin. And, I mean, very resilient. Very, like, the perseverance to being a Lebanese businessman is extremely tough. And that's why I think it's it kind of like it's your formation. It's your, you know, your crash, hardcore jiu-jitsu 10 years of like, you gotta, you gotta fight. You gotta let it out. <laughs> you gotta really fight to survive and yeah. to just, you know, f 
fall down and stand back up and fall down and stand back up. And I wouldn't regret any moment. But moving forward, unfortunately, I don't see any hope for this country anytime soon. Because the people are not uniting. The people are very divided. They're very segregated. I mean, I mean, a fucking bomb blew off half the right city. There. Yeah, just, just uh, a thousand meters many, away from us now. How many now? people went down the, the next day? You were there. Yeah. 200,000. Yeah. 200 fucking thousand. Come on. I, since 2015, I gave everything I had to that revolution. Everything. I really believed in it. And then I saw that it didn't work out. I really kind of like, I lost hope. And it was very hurtful. And I kind of started like distancing myself from, from being here. I, I, I knew that I had to start focusing outside. And hence, I got Istanbul, uh, Dubai, Egypt. Uh, Egypt. I, I really, I was like focusing on it because I just knew that this was too unstable. And, Something was going to happen eventually. Now, later, it's something is going to happen and it didn't make sense. I was begging my mother for, for years after my father passed away, change the money from Lebanese pound to dollars. Get the money out from Lebanon. It doesn't make sense to earn this much interest rate. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Get it out. And on, and on August 4th, you were in your office, which is in Jamezi, I believe, and I saw the destruction of what happened to your house, and I'm, I'm very sorry about seeing that with you and Valentina's uh, stories, because, I mean, that was such a colorful, creative, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's home. Home, yeah. home. Home got disintegrated. So on behalf of all of us, you know, we're really sorry about what happened to the house as well. It, you know, it just, we knew, like you were saying, everybody was aware that something was not right. Something could not hold up anymore. And... It was just one hit after another after another until August 4th. So how, how have you changed on, on August 4th at 6, 6 p.m. versus Nimr at August 4th, 6.08 p.m.? Before that, it was great. Family lives here, beautiful house in the mountains, 106 years old, five generations of men, four of them passed away in that home. Raise your kids here, send them to school here, go on a few bucks outside, send the dollars here, live like a king. Now, after that, who... Can you imagine my mother passed away or my sister passed away or I mean, my friend is in a coma. I'm sure your friends are in a, or some people, some of our friends are dead. It's not worth it. Is it worth it? I mean, is it it's such a big question? You right? die. <coughs> Look at what happened today in the South. It's such a big question. And, uh, and you can die. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> today, like we were we were we were discussing, we were sitting today with with our friends. Uh, we, I had a meeting and we were like, yeah, I saw some people uh, kind of uh, taking pictures of the site as if it was like uh, some, some sort of touristic uh, mm. attraction. And then you, you think that those, those same people that are taking those pictures, I feel that, like, I don't blame anyone, f the people. It's I mean. shocking. I don't blame, Shock I, I don't blame yeah. anyone. I just feel that because of these things, you start understanding that people are kind of numb and they don't realize maybe that that could have been them so easily. They could have randomly been... I mean, six years, those ammonium were right next to our, pra our places where we party, where you would have at any point in time 15,000 people in Biel. Yeah. So imagine right. yeah. that had happened with all of these people here. Imagine, imagine coronavirus, coronavirus wasn't there and people were actually in Beirut. You know, we had and that. Imagine the economy was fine and the politics were fine and yeah. people were out, you know, yeah, that would have been 11 p.m. instead of 6 p.m. 200 people up to maybe 20,000 people. Massive. That would have been a mass, like. Bloodshed. Yeah. It is a massacre already. No, no, no. That's but not like, a, no, yeah, but no, yeah, on yeah. another scale, maybe. But um, I, I, I would like maybe to throw in some hope uh, into this conversation yeah, a mean, bit. The, from, from, not from, not from our, our business standpoint, not from. Not from the, the numbers and the business and where that can go, because yes, that is mega difficult. That's mega difficult to come back again and say, okay, um, our, I'll, speak, I'll speak about our, our company. We will have to pay a bit less than 2 million to be able to Rebuild. be operational yeah, again yeah. pre-August 4. Same, not to actually do anything extra or anything more. But wh why we got, uh, we, you always, uh, in, a, in a, such a crisis or such a tough, uh, when you're against a tough wall, you, uh, you always ask yourself, why, why did you get into, it, into this in the first place, right? You always kind of retrospect. You go back and you think again. Um, on a personal level, like, uh, and I can also speak for, for a lot of the, 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 the people that are, that are, are surrounding our, our group, for example, that 
we have a there's a there's a mission that ha that is happening in parallel to a really successful operation as well because we've chosen to go down the route of uh, the sharing so we have a lot of people that own stake in our clubs and never at a certain point also they because we, we we no one could have ever done this alone something this big we yes. had a lot of people helping uh, left right and center but there is a mission in parallel that's happening and that shouldn't uh, we shouldn't that shouldn't break the mission of the local scene and what what we what we built together you know like all of all of these guys that are now uh, aspiring to produce music all of these bands that you know, have these new spaces and new homes that they can do things in uh, all of these university students that have places to go that look like them that are also woke and 2020 right. because partying today is and and Nimmer knows this very well he worked on it a lot with Valentina and it, look at Disco Banana I mean like what what a great concept Disco Banana is and you feel that if you get someone from Cirque du Soleil let's say from like if you get uh, Gila Liberté himself and you put him in Disco Banana he will be like what the fuck are you guys doing here this is awesome so th that level of creativity that level of uh, inspiration between each other that that mission of what we are doing for our country and the way we are changing the way our country is perceived in mass media you know how cnn portrays it or how bbc portrays it like me uh, nimir and i samir and the guys on a couple of camels uh, moving into the desert that we don't even have here <laughs> so we were we were really we were really on a mission to change the way people saw our country I mean that that did, is we, still there. We did put we did put the operation on the map. of it yeah. is is the operation of it is what's tough. But that mission is still there. Hatta taraf bqul wa hatta law rajatni al kuch al iman tabai rah idallu mahallo yani. Inno ana iman bhaid al mission li bilashne ha sawa. But inno there will have to be adjustments. Yani we'll have to go out a bit, see what's happening outside, try to nidam al amisir hon. Inno Obviously, it won't, won't be streamlined like it was pre-August uh, yeah. uh, 4th, but no, we, we will have to it's adapt. It's just like, you see, everything you're saying is, is correct. And honestly, at the end of the day, uh, we all want to live here, yeah. you know? I mean, I don't want to have to leave and go to the U.S. or have my sister be in Dubai or... I mean, we were 11 guys. They're, none of them are here. Yeah. None yeah. of my friends are here. Yeah. I'm literally alone. I'm the only last man standing from the whole crew. Everyone is somewhere. That fucking sucks. <laughs> you know, your friends, we don't have this. We don't have this. Yeah. We don't have this. We can't keep, we don't have, we, we try to develop communities and we try to raise them, but they keep getting dispersed mm -hmm. and they have to keep leaving. So if you ask me, you know, do I want hope? Yes. I'd love to live here. Who has a country like ours? Everything is five minutes apart. Obviously, a lot of countries in the world are beautiful, but ours is tiny Geography and beautiful. Is tiny. That's what's nice about it. It's so close. <laughs> Everything is so close to each other, and we have it all. But the bomb happened, man. And that's what's so scary is that it happened, and it's going to happen again, and it's happening today, and it's going to happen again because it's crooks, warlords that put suits on, and now... Gangsters are politicians, and these guys are negligent. They are criminals. That's who they are. You can't speak to a criminal. You can't speak to a Pablo Escobar and tell him to. You can't speak to these people. You just can't. These are criminals. What happened here is just criminal. And for them, it's normal. So this is going to happen again, bro. Yeah. But next time, you could die. Yeah. Or your sister could die, or your mother could die, or your friend could die. Is it worth it? This is the real question. Post bomb? Yeah. Earn some bucks from outside, send them here. Keep it going. Pre bomb. Post bomb? You really have to think twice, bro. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you putting, have to think putting, twice. Put, putting our hearts back into it and rebuilding, you have it, to ask yourself the question if the, if the system doesn't change. What's the point it, of rebuilding? Exactly, because this can happen again and again and again and again and again, and then... How many years are we going to waste? Uh, we're, so there is a we're, we're in our 30s right now. How much money 40. have we spent? How much yeah. money have we invested? We've invested 10 million. 10 million. And it's and gone in a few seconds. I know, can you imagine? Yeah. And for those that, let's say, had the millions or retired on them and they can't touch their money? Yeah. What a mess. I know. I know. 
The thing is, the other day I was I was hearing on on TV they were speaking about. Uh, Mish on TV, actually, there was, there's this group of people that are really also trying to uh, push forward, trying to change, you know, trying to get to Majlis uh, Nyeh, to see if they can push forward some sort of agenda. And they were speaking, the, their first and foremost uh, thing that they wanted to do is when you say capital control, it can't be put on the people that have on hundred thousand right. dollars after fifty years of work. Look, even if, like if you have my ten million and yeah. you lived in Africa and you earned your money fairly, why would you be kept why would you why, like if you paid your taxes, why should you be touched? Even if you have more than a million or two yeah. or three. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But you, you, know, it, you, it touches you, yani, I know. it's it's really fucked up on everyone at all levels, right? And why should we pay for the price of, of, of their corruption and their and their mis I mean the banks loan the government, right? Why did you loan the government? Why did you loan the government? Did you ask for their audit report? For years. Denied, denied, did you denied, ask? Denied. But did you ask them if you loan me money? Would for years. Not, for wouldn't years. Wouldn't you ask me for accountability to re return your money back? Of course. Wouldn't you see if I have assets to yeah. give you your money back? Wouldn't sure. you see if my credit rating is good to give you your money back? Yeah. If you were to loan me without asking those, you're an idiot. But you're loaning my money without doing the back, like without, you know, checking. That's your responsibility. That's true. Not mine. No, that was the first time they didn't check. But the second and third and fourth time, <laughs> they knew it. And no, the first time no. they didn't check. Sure. But like 15 years later, yeah. they knew what yeah. was happening. We they were like, that. take yeah. their money. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. That's so why I know. Yeah, if this system doesn't change. But you think it will change? <laughs> you really think it will change? Look. There's a ripple effect that's happening right now. Definitely the circumstances that have led from October 17 to now, it's not going to have the slip in. But effectively, really, or is it going to change? It has to be. It, it's not going to change in the way people think. It will have to change brick by brick, like it always was supposed to change. If that also doesn't work, then uh, hadith. But brick by brick, it has to change. But not a single brick has moved, right? We're, here we are talking almost a year later. We're going to extend this talk a little bit more. Not a single brick. Sorry, guys, I have to do I'm sorry, this is good. Don't, don't, put, don't stop me. Not a single brick has been moved yet. And here we are almost a year since, you know, people's eyes finally opened up to the situation going yeah. on around us. So, so what kind of hope can we have that, you know, we can have more confidence in the nation? Because... I mean, ne ne never, is, never is being. He's being honest. He's being direct. And no, but there is a there is a change. There is a there is there okay. is a ripple effect. We fee, fee a nationalism that's back again since October 17. And it lemis the jama that they saw to be famo bil siyasi or bil iktisad. I was in the lemis jama. I can't be famo la bil siyasi or la bil iktisad. I I I, yeah. I never understood well, these things. Also, for the At the end of so, the day, being a politician is no longer a respectable thing. That's yeah, true. you know. Why, also back, that. In the, back in the day. Before that, you being a politician, <laughs> our, <laughs> friend, our friend's father was a politician or whatnot. It was something to look, you know, it was nice. <laughs> now, it's, I don't really right. want to be associated to you. Yeah, that's so that's definitely, yeah, yeah. so we're agreeing, bro, that something has changed. But we need to talk about effective change. Okay. We're going to talk about effective change because it's going to affect your life, my life, and our family's lives. Are we going to sit here and ruin the rest of our lives? Is it going to happen? Is it going to take 20 years, 30 years? It sucks to say this. It really sucks to say this because we need to be doing it. But who's going down to the Thawra? It's us. Yeah. It's him. It's us. But really, effectively, the people, the ones that really need to be there, are they there? They were there for a bit. It was beautiful to see what happened from Tripoli, from the north to the south. But how long did it last? No, I, I, no, I, I really think that there is a collective consciousness that's happening since October 17th. And I would sacrifice a lot of time and operation if that means there is some sort of change that will come uh, way down the line. Because, yeah, brick by brick. And it really starts with a collective consciousness and nationalism that yes. we are seeing today. We yeah. had never seen that. Yeah. We true. had never seen that in the 90s. Even when Hariri came back and what gave so much uh, hope. Breath and hope, <laughs> yeah. there wasn't that collective. Can you know, oh, hey, see that Hariri guy that's uh, rebuilding Beirut. But we weren't part of it. يعني اليوم وقت يقولوا للشباب الصغار انه استرجاع الصحات العامه صاروا يرجعوا الصحات لنا نحن هيدي هيدا حديث كثير كبير هيدا حديث ذاتس موفينج اليوم اول ذا لوك ات ميجافون فور اكزامبل لوك ات ذات فري بريس 
يو نو قبل كان عندنا انه نهار ديار كذا ما كان عندنا شيء نقدر نشوفه سو في كولكتيف كونشسنس يلي عم بيصير ذات ويل افكت ايفري بودي اف وي بوش فورورد بس يس اي ريلي انديستاند اي ريلي انديستاند ذا ديجري اوف اور لوس Sometimes it's put on the balance and you're like... Hey, it's at the end of the day, selfishness. Of course. It's yeah, meaning, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we have done our part for this country. We're 11, boys. Last man. I've done my part. Yeah. I've invested a shitload of money in this country. I stayed here. I put hopes. I put Lebanon on the map. So did you. We all did. We did our part for this country. This is the question right now. Do I do the selfish thing and leave? And have... Normal problems, normal fucking problems, like a dog shitting on my lawn. Or a depressed or my, dog. Or, you know, that's, you know, can I have those problems? Am I entitled to have those fucking problems? <laughs> to worry Come about on. No, or no electricity, no water, <laughs> the gas tank. It's crazy, man. <laughs> the like, gas how much can one take? It's, uh, honestly, I'm grateful for it all. Yeah. We... We survived a nuclear bomb. <laughs> I mean, we're the, we are the, the strongest, toughest businessman in the world. No one will beat us. Anywhere well, you put us in the world there right was now, a, There was a joke uh, the other day, not a joke, but really, uh, if, you know, we all should change our CVs from uh, did that to survivor of. Yeah, you know, right. fuck the did that part. <laughs> survived <laughs> that, survived this, and any company would look at that and like, you're hired, done. You know, yeah, you I mean, know, it's it's not my old trash now. My old trash now. As a few reporters yeah. said it, and even if a, a Hollywood producer were to make a movie about this, they would just like tone it down. This makes no it's sense. Too much, yeah. It's too much. It's not realistic. Yeah. Anyways, what you're saying is completely right, and we need to give hope and we need to push it. But this is where the the real question lies for us: Are we going to be selfish and think about us because we could we could really do very well outside, anywhere we were placed after what we've been through. We would flourish, we would be rich, we would be happy, we would have normal problems, and we would just live, because this is what it's about at the end of the day, yeah. living, having a good time, I think a healthy, raising your kids, and having I think a healthy, healthy mix. A healthy mix, because you also come in today, you won't come out with a car, and you won't come out with all this work that you worked for the last year. But you can also come out with a family outside. So you will have to do a healthy mix of, of everything. So we will have to continue what we did here because we believe in it hey, so much. We didn't do it because you know, we, we wanted a quick buck. We did it because we believed in it. We yeah. have to continue it. But at the same time, we have to look. You know, today, a, a company like, like Nimmers or a company like ours, or we, we, we were housing 173 people working within that institution that were uh, probably putting food on the table for 173 families. That's true. How did Jamia? They've been working with us for over six years now. So they're like family. There's going to have to be a healthy mix of how we move forward. You never know. This pressure that's happening internationally, the collective consciousness of the young people, and the fact that today there are certain things that are changing. We might be looking at a, at a, at a different Can you scene. Maybe. Inshallah. If it this happens, yeah. I'm Hallelujah. serious. We're all rich. Hallelujah. Inshallah. Yeah. We're all rich. <laughs> this country, the rich. It's not possible not to be rich in this country. This is a functioning country. It could be a functioning country. <laughs> With zero resources. Seriously. Like, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, come on. Tell them how much money you make, you make every year. We make money. You know, it's not like, you know, it, 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 it works. With all the shit. Can you imagine it worked? Perfect. I don't want to go. I don't want to, but I might have to. There's a part of your unconscious that's a bit worried about staying, okay, right? Valentina doesn't want to come down to Beirut. Yeah. And you know, what? Stay in the mountains and. I know she doesn't want to come down, and she's worried every time she comes down. Yeah, you know what? what like, what? Well, yeah. What do I tell her? Come on down, we got, let's go for a cruise. Mm, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're sitting here with you know two guys who represent you know. The real, the real, probably 80% of the modern happening Beirut nightlife. You know, this is essentially our backbone, you know, to what's created the scene and where it was at its finest for the last eight, nine years. And here we are, all of us got hit by one giant hit. It was several small steps that happened, including the pandemic, leading us to, you know, where we were to now. And August 4th, and here we are talking almost two months later, and it feels like some of us are still in confusion whether 
we should even try reinvesting? We should even try to keep some kind of hope or whatsoever? Or do we just stay chill and wait for the storm to pass? Because here it is, you know, the summer is already over. We didn't have a summer 2020. I think you guys barely had a couple of weeks, you know, and I know that you guys had lots of plans too, but obviously, you know, there's things that didn't come through. Where, where, what would be the first thing that would give you guys, especially you, what would give you optimism that, okay, it's time that we get our, we get our, our show, you know, happening again? I don't know, man. I mean, I just, I really want to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I just, I think that if, 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 if we see a bit of change with, with all this international pressure that's coming from abroad, if we get a bit lucky, if, uh, if we see signs of like uh, a bit of normalization when it comes to the economy or the, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, we ha I have, I have $2 million worth of assets sitting right here. Like I just what, throw them away. I'm just doing nothing. I have $400,000 worth of trees. I have half a million dollars worth of sound system. I have a million dollars worth of structures. What do I do with them? I want to use those assets. If I put them in a, in a hangar, they're going to rot. Yeah. The, the trees will dry and everything else will go away. So uh, sure. Uh, can you tell me next summer will we be operational? Maybe the pandemic hopefully will be over. Hopefully, uh, if, the, if 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 this capital control stops and and they they manage to peg the Lebanese pound to a normal rate where we can actually use our our money to be able to, I mean we're very dependent on the dollar. How do we get international DJs? Will the scene change? Maybe maybe we'll have to rely on local talents. Maybe that's the next step. You know, halas. We can't bring international DJs. You can't. I can't. Hence, that's it. This is the reality of things. You know. Uh, that it might be, you know, the rise of of the local talent. That might be a good thing as well. Who knows? But a lot of things have to happen before any of us take a risk of reopening. Because unfortunately, if we reopen, we could even lose more. You have to start paying rent. You have to start paying your employees. You have to pay your suppliers. How are we going to make money? H how much are we going to sell our vodka red bull for? Yeah, like, like the conversation is twofold, right? Like, like I said a bit earlier, there is, and and at at a, at a, at a certain point when we're going through such a deep, deeply rooted crisis, you have to separate both. You have your 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 kind of like mission statement and what you wanted to do. Because at the end of the day, if you ask me on a personal level, I, I'm I'm an artist. I I love making music, and I love making people happy. You know, that's a mission statement. And I love uh, getting people together, etc., etc. As a be Hangar, Diesel Bahar, or is in a nice place called Am or the Grand Factory, wherever that is or wh whatever that looks like. But, and also, in parallel, you have the operations of things. I, I think because, because of all the challenges that we've been uh, presented, and because every single time we're presented with a certain challenge, we, we kind of understand how are we going to adapt and how we, we're going to do that, the operation side of the business will have to uh, change drastically. But our belief system and what we always did, because, um, for example, at Am, um, there, there were four nights at Am, um, right, in summer. There was one night that was built on the international DJs, which was Saturday, or second Sunday. Then you had three other nights that were built on the local, local, uh, the local music and local yeah. talent. The same was with, uh, with the uh, Disco Banana. So the Disco Banana, Banana was, you had some dancers from abroad, but the DJs and the artists were local DJs. There and were people that the, were bringing the party. Even the last season, the, were, the dancers were local as well. Yeah, exactly. We, we, yeah, yeah, so true. the idea is like, we, 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 were, we were doing a healthy balance of a lot of different things. And if that today has to change, then it has to change, you know. And at the end of the day, you really have to separate both. This one is, is A-OK -okay today, yesterday, tomorrow, every day of the week. Our heart is always in the right place. We want musically our culture to survive, to always be a beacon of light for our country, for the region. Operationally, هيدا حديث بده بده فيه كثير اسئله فيه yeah, yeah. سؤال عن الدوله وين بدها تصير سؤال عن السيستم كله كيف بده يكون راكب عن الباجينج كيف بده يصير اذا اتس اولويز جونا بي فلكتويتنج اتسترا اتسترا سو ماني كويستشنز ذير بس توداي ار وي ريدي فور اور ايفن اور بروفيت مارجن تو ديسابير ات ا سيرتن اكستنت ات هاد اوريدي ديسابيرد ان ذا لاست كايند ان ذا لاست اوبريشنال مانث بيفور ذا اكسبلوجن يو نو سينس ذا دولار بيكيم 7500 اتسترا اتسترا المعاشات كمان ما عليو بنفس الوقت سو ات واز كايند اوف سو ذات بروفيت مارجن وي ويفد جود باي تو ذات بروفيت مارجن بس يو نو سمثينغ خي ات ذا اند اوف ذا داي وي ستيل لوكت ات اور سيلز وي وير هابي اور امبلويز وير هابي اور بيبل وير هابي ذا دي جيز وير ستيل كومينغ ان ذا بارتيز وير ستيل هابينغ اند ذاتس يعني ذا جولدن دايز وير ذير 
today we're, we're, we're on a di at a different level. You go outside also, you try to open a few things outside, you try to do a healthy mix of everything. There isn't a rule book, right? There isn't a, 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 club, uh, a club success for dummies. Yeah. That, that book does not exist. You know, you have one for DJs, but you don't have one for... The book exists. The book exists. DJing for dummies. No, it's, it's a series. It's a series. So, but there isn't one of like building a successful uh, Haida in a crisis, in a uh, economic... Uh, that, um, yeah. that, that manual doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So we will have to to rewrite that manual in a way and we will have to stand together and see what, what happens. Story of a Lebanese man. Yeah. That's right, yeah, see? You gotta story, rewrite the book. story of a Lebanese man. I mean, we had, we had, a, woman, we had a festival in, in, in 219. That was like the ultimate dream for like 10 years working up to that. I did lose money. I didn't make money. Festivals lose money the of first course, four years. Of course, of course. It's not your fault. Every festival loses money. Of course, money. but you know, we, we got to a place where... where, where yani, the future looked bright in the toughest scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Summer 2019 was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah. This was right before the, the yeah. you know, so that means it wasn't good. Lebanon was not good in summer 2019, but it was a great summer for us. was resilient. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. this is what I'm trying to say, is that it cannot have been good economically and in the back end to happen what happened in October 17. Something wrong was happening. But for, it, for us to have, for, for a festival to have had happened in Lebanon, for us to have had a record-breaking summer. It looks like it would be the first industry that can probably be saved from the, from all this. Yeah, yeah, the numbers, yeah. the numbers say it. This is one of the biggest contributors to our GDP. I mean, I'm all for going back to agriculture and all of that. That's amazing. <laughs> but that, that is amazing. That is amazing. I'm not saying it uh, in any. No, uh, really? cynical. It's amazing. But you have, or yani, we have an industry that doesn't need rehabilitation. It's there. The people are there. We can do it. All we need is just not to die. Yani that's the only thing we're asking for. Ma am not lub shi tani. Ma bed de shi. Bas bed de man mo tkhay. Bas bas. Bas. So simple. Bas. So easy, yeah. And that, you know something, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny that we're sitting, actually, we're sitting in Iris today. And yeah. uh, this uh, the AdMind people, and uh, thank you for them for, for having us here. And uh, you see, you know, look at this place, How, uh, you know. How yeah. much, how much, how much uh, time and energy went into this place, and it was happening. It was buzzing. You said we're eighty percent. We're actually not. We're we're eighty percent of maybe the alternative side of a uh, clubbing. But there is so much happening in this country. So much. It's unreal how much yeah. is happening in that industry and how much potential that industry has. We we just need basics. Yeah. Basics. Just let us survive. Basics. Yeah. Okay. Well Guys, said. Well I, said. I, I, I got a, I got a love 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 having you guys here together you know again you know two uh in in previous times you would co consider them competing forces but you can see that their voices are united you know with yeah. everything that's happened in the country and it's been an honest pleasure being with you guys here in rendezvous for beirut uh we can only be optimistic for a certain limit maybe we're on our last thread but we still got a thread left right yes, and, you know we I still have at least bet i agree i agree i mean at the end of the day the lebanese people the lebanese flag this country has always been a beacon of hope uh, we've survived. We are the oldest culture in the world. Uh, we've survived so many things. This is uh, nothing in the history of this country or this, 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 this piece of land. Uh, Lebanese people are resilient. They're perseverant. They've, they've, they've destroyed and accomplished so many things outside of this country. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully things will change. Times will turn and... Uh, the Lebanese people will wake up and change will happen and we will be able to all live here, all our friends to come back, for us to regrow our community, our kids to grow up here and just have a, have a normal, happy, decent life. Yeah, what a beautiful dream. That would be beautiful really dream. amazing. Nemra Saliba, Uber House, Garten, Discotech and all them. Uh, Wasim Bumalham also from factory people and all those other venues that exist as well. It's been a pleasure having you guys here. Thanks, sir. Rendezvous for Bay really appreciates your insight. Thanks, and man. it's so nice having you guys sit down. We should, we should do this more often, guys, yes. right? And just a reminder that Ivan Debs, the artwork is still being auctioned. And so uh, all the uh, proceeds from that will go to the NGOs. So make sure that you do put a bid as that auction is going to end very, very soon. Thanks a lot, brothers. It's been fantastic having you here. Yeah. We've partied a lot. We'll have some tequila hopefully soon. <laughs> and we'll have uh, some after parties and, you know, live our lives together again. Yes, Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.